you have to have those real raw emotions, those times when you want to pull the covers over your head and cry and get angry and, and wonder why this is happening. I did that. I understand that. What I want to say is get it out. Do it. Get it out. But then take the covers off your head and you stand up and you put one foot in front of the next and you just keep going. Cancer stinks. <laughs> And we can laugh about it, and we joke about it often, but I don't care who you are, losing your hair is tough. Um, I didn't even like my hair that much, and losing it was tough. I remember my, uh, my doctor told me uh, I would definitely lose my hair within the first two weeks, the first 14 days. So I'm in his office, day 13, and I had not lost a strain on my head. And uh, that's right. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm gonna, I have this rare cancer. I'm probably going to be one of the rare ones. Like that, that half a percent that doesn't lose their hair. I know it. So I'm busy telling him this, and he's just, you know, got the sweet little smile. Sure, honey. <laughs> the next morning, I woke up, and there were just clumps of hair everywhere. Oh, and I thought, well, at least my doctor knows what he's talking about. <laughs> That's good, I guess. I have joined the ranks of working mom, and I am now facing the same obstacles that everyone else faces, time, energy, willpower <laughs> to stay healthy. So my goal is to make fitness fun and convenient. Women are really the key to that family unit. Uh, we tend to take everything on, and the last thing we think about is our own health. So I want to talk to women. I want to continue to educate women and help them make their own fitness a priority because if we're not healthy, we can't be there um, for everybody else. I wanted women to make their health a priority and not feel guilty about doing so because I think a lot of women, um, especially once you start having families, it's all about, you know, you get your kids to the doctors, you nag your husband endlessly and you set the appointment and you drive them there if you have to. But, but then when it comes to you, uh, you know, I don't really have time to go to the doctor today. I've got work. I've got this. I've got that. We find excuses to not take care of ourselves. And I think a lot of that comes from maybe, maybe a little bit of guilt of, well, if I'm taking care of myself, I'm not taking care of someone else. And so I want to help women understand that um, taking care of their own health is not a selfish act. It's a very selfless act because, frankly, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't be there for everyone else. I'm so passionate about the role that um, sports plays in our lives. Athletic activity and, and especially team sports um, teaches us so many great life lessons. And I know Connie spoke of, of many and, and Megan did the same. We learn to work as a team. We learn to set goals and work hard to achieve success. We learn humility <laughs> and patience we get that much needed physical activity and we also learn to fuel our bodies with the proper nutrition to keep us going day after day. Gymnastics gave me the opportunity to make friends and travel the world and opened my eyes and mind to um, things that I never would have even dreamed were possible. Oh gosh, I remember walking into the Georgia Dome 40,000 screaming fans, flash bulbs popping, the entire crowd chanting, USA. And that was for training. So you can imagine the pure insanity of competition night during the team final round. Um, it was truly magical and, and obviously just an incredible moment in time. You know, standing up there, on that award podium at the end of the night with my teammates, red, white, and blue uniform, USA across the back, gold medal around your neck, seeing the American flag being raised and hearing the sounds of our national anthem. You just, 
you can't compare it to anything else. Um, it was a dream come true for me and, and for all of us.